recording. So I was on Twitter and I saw this result by Jun Kiyoshi, who has programmatically made this points moving and arrows pointing towards effect. And I thought, I can do that in geometry nodes. And so I did. And I'm going to teach you how to do it too. So here you can see uh, this result. Uh, same basic thing. You have points moving around, arrows pointing towards them, except it's fully procedural. You can control the number of arrows. Uh, you can also control the spacing, how close do the arrows get to their uh, respective points, and there's also a bunch of other parameters. So again, uh, full credit to Jun Kiyoshi, and let's make this result in geometry nodes. I would say this is a intermediate tutorial, but also beginner friendly. So, we're going to go to geometry nodes and I'm going to delete everything and add in a plane or you could add in any object uh, because I'm going to turn this into a geometry nodes object. So uh, first thing we need to do is we need to have a circle composed of points. There's going to be a lot of instancing uh, for this tutorial, by the way. So I'm going to start with a mesh circle and on that circle, I'm going to instance on points uh, the circle again which actually creates a cool uh, little pattern. I'm just gonna scale this down until we have the correct uh, points and I'm gonna use ngon to fill this in. So here are our points. Next, I wanna have the points that are inside of here moving around and then we'll create the arrows that are pointing towards them. Uh, so to create the points, I'm just gonna use the points node. Let's say that we have five of them and I'm going to set position. In other words, I'm gonna move them uh, relative to a noise function. So the randomness is going to come from noise. And you can see, uh, well, right now they're all using the same uh, noise value, so separate them by index. Uh, you can see as I animate this, uh, they're moving around, but they're kind of uh, up here on the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 vector. So we're going to correct for that by subtracting by 0.5 on every axis. I'm also gonna constrain this to only be on the XY plane. I don't want it moving up and down, uh, Z. So I'm gonna multiply this by one, one, zero. And uh, we can also scale uh, this effect, if I can find scale, uh, by much more. Such that when we animate this by time, well, <laughs> it's a bit chaotic right now. Uh, we can bring down the scale, bring down the detail, and now we have something more usable. So these are our points uh, combined with our uh, circle evaluation. I guess I want to make sure the scale isn't so large that it goes outside the bounds. So I'm going to set this to like two and a half or something like that. Uh, next, I want to create the arrows, which are just going to be a bunch of lines pointing towards uh, the nearest neighbor. So uh, to do that, on the circle, again, we're going to instance on points a curve line a curve line. Let's view that. Right now they're all pointing upwards is why you can't see that. Um, I'm going to make them on the x-axis so now you can see them and they need to point towards their nearest neighbor. Uh, to find the nearest neighbor we can use a geometry proximity node uh, which will tell us exactly which one's the closest. So we take our points say which point is the closest and then we're going to output the position as a vector but uh, to have this pointed the right way, uh, what we can do is we can actually calculate the uh, rotation that this needs. So basically, uh, each curve line is pointed towards the x-axis. I want to rotate it about their respective centers so that they're pointing at the nearest neighbor in some sense. So I believe if we take this and subtract them, so I'm finding the nearest neighbor and subtracting away the point, which will create vectors that kind of look like this, pointing at the nearest neighbor. Uh, I'm going to take that. You can't really plug this directly into rotation, but if you use a align Euler to vector and put this in as the vector, uh, you can now see that it is not doing the correct thing. But we tried. That's important. Um, let's see what's going on here. Bring down the scale. Is it uh, looking at the nearest neighbor? Oh, right now we didn't use the set position. There you go. Basically, it was looking at all the points centered, but uh, there weren't any of them uh, moving. So now uh, they're moving. And also, we can make the scale a function of how far away it is. So we know where the nearest point is and the position of our uh, point along the circle. 
if we calculate the distance of that and use that as the scale, it will exactly uh, be the distance such that it's touching the points. In fact, let's uh, join this over here. And you can see we have this effect, which is pretty cool on its own, actually. Uh, but we want to turn this into arrows. Uh, so what I'm going to do is for this distance, I'm going to move it a bit further away. So instead of going all the way, we can subtract by like 0.15. And this will get it most of the way there. Let's actually do point 0.2. It's like going all the way to the point, but then saying subtract a bit um, is what is going on here. Um, next order of business is we need to make these into arrows in the sense that they should have triangles at the tips. And uh, you guessed it, that's going to be more instance on points. So uh, we can take these curves and realize them so they're actual usable curves. We're going to instance on points a mesh circle, Y circle, uh, because you can take the vertices down to three and then you have triangles. So I'm gonna scale these down and you can see now we have triangles. We also have them on the border, but we'll fix that. Uh, to not have them on the border, I'm gonna use endpoint selection, which has the two endpoints of our curve. Uh, we can use this as the selection and just get rid of the initial input. So in other words, we have a curve. We're saying only look at the last vertex and uh, for those, apply the triangle. Uh, just like last time, we can do a rotation using an align Euler to vector, although this time, instead of like calculating the position subtraction, uh, we can just use the curve tangent, and this will point the correct direction. So if I merge this, you can see uh, we now have arrows. At least we should. They're kind of rotated in the... Uh, 3D. I guess uh, what I want to do is I never multiplied this by zero. So that was a mistake I made a while ago. Whoopsies. Um, okay. The, this is a bit too cluttered, so I'm going to get rid of the number of points, or bring it down rather. And I'm going to bring these arrows back just a bit like that. Um, last order of business is this isn't really visible. Like if I get rid of the overlay, right, this is all we have. So uh, I'm going to make these triangles filled in. I'm going to make these uh, curves actually meshes. So curve to mesh. Connect that there. And we can actually use this uh, triangle from before. Right there. Uh, what does it not like? Curve to mesh. Oh, this is a mesh circle. Whoopsies. Uh, we can use a curve circle. So we're going to sweep one uh, curve along the other and bring down that radius way more. Um, and finally, uh, we need to make our points. I know there, there's so many instance on points, but we need another instance on points. Nope, that is the wrong node. On these moving points, I want to instance a, let's say, circle. Make that end gone make that smaller and that is the result that uh, we saw from before let me uh, actually pull it up here i feel like it's the same kind of thing the only difference is the number of points in all this uh, so again we can control that over here we can get super dense to the point where it's creating these nice abstract shapes this is actually a cool render that's interesting or you could take it down so that there's only a few points uh, either way, uh, that is the tutorial. Um, I'm not going to make this one available on Patreon because it's the work of somebody else. Um, but uh, you can use the link in the description to go to this person's Twitter, uh, Jun Kiyoshi, and check out their work. Um, thank you for watching, and hopefully you learned something. Uh, but if you do want to join Patreon, not for this project file, but in general, uh, you know where to go.